Welcome to Phil in the Blank's Pelotero Profiles. I'm Phil, and for the greater part of the past decade, I've been traveling to Cuba and frequently have taken in the highest level of baseball on the island, the Cuban National Series. During my travels, I've had the good fortune to see many future stars of Major League Baseball, many more that never quite made it, and quite a few that are currently working their way to the top level. Join me as I share my pictures, videos, thoughts, and stories on some of the bigger name and soon to be big name Cuban Peloteros or ball players. Oscar Colas is being touted as the Cuban Otani and as of January 2021 is a major league free agent. However, we might not see him in a major league organization this year, and doubts persist whether we will ever see him play on both sides of the ball for an MLB squad. Let's take a little deeper look at Oscar Colas. First, thanks to Cuban journalist and good friend Boris Luis Cabrera Costa for the still photos featured. And a disclaimer that unlike many Cuban prospects, I have not seen Colas play in person, and materials on him are limited. But let's look at what we do know. Colas is listed at 6'1", 209 pounds. He bats left and throws left, and projects as a corner outfielder and first baseman. But the most tantalizing aspect is that he has pitched at the pro level. He was born on September 17, 1998 in Santiago de Cuba, and will turn 23 years old in the fall of 2021. Colas debuted for the Avispas of Santiago in the Cuban National Series in 2016 at 17 years of age. This path isn't uncommon for Cuba's best youngsters, but playing time isn't guaranteed at that point. He was 11 and a half years younger than league average and put up solid, if not spectacular numbers, appearing in 23 of the Wasps' 45 games, slashing 278, 370, 494, with four home runs in 79 at-bats. That same year, he was granted the opportunity to develop in Japan, signing with the SoftBank Hawks and being assigned to their top minor league squad. SoftBank has leveraged these Cuban contracts into a mini dynasty in Japan, winning five titles at the end of the 2010s. The hope was that Colas might be the next jewel in that crown. Colas returned to Cuba in 2018 and was selected by Hogin in the second phase reinforcement draft as a batter. Reports indicate Colas himself might prefer to play as a fielder, but footage has recently surfaced of him pitching, with indications he has been topping out at 93 miles per hour. The comparisons to Japan's Shohei Otani are inevitable, but they are also cautionary, as the Angels are still trying to find the best way to employ the first modern two-way player who has struggled with injuries and performance. Another concern with Colas has been conditioning, as he has appeared more on the soft side. However, he has been showing an obvious physical transformation through weight training, and is giving hope that he has shed baby fat while adjusting to a new Western lifestyle. Colas debuted with a top-level soft bank squad in 2019 and hit a home run in his first at bat. He would appear as a late-season call-up for the eventual MPB champions, hitting 278, 381, and 444 in a small sample of 18 bats. He would soon declare his intentions to pursue a path to MLB. This decision was partially stalled by his contractual obligation to SoftBank. However, this hurdle has been cleared and Cole Ass has been declared a free agent as of the fall of 2020. Just in time for the advent of coronavirus and the havoc it wreaked on the international signing period. The period usually commences in July, but was delayed until January 15th, 2021, meaning most of the already capped dollars teams had to spend were spoken for. Hence why a player who might usually command close to a max bonus approaching six million is rumored to be waiting until 2022 and does not have a concrete offer on the table. Much of Colas' value will come from his bat. Reports of a five-tool athlete might be fiction. However, he is swift enough to cover the corner outfield, with the same arm creating mystery around his pitching, more likely to play above average in right field. At the plate, he has shown a balanced inside-out approach with his young power to the opposite field so far. I personally see similarity to stance and swing mechanic in Pablo Sandoval and hope that as he adds strength, can maintain his balanced multi-field hitting approach. I often joke that if you speculate that the Chicago White Sox are interested in a top Cuban prospect, you have a 75% chance of being right. But there appears mutual interest for him to join their stacked Cuban pipeline. 
Speculation is that he will wait to sign in January 2022 for at least $3 million, with the path looking to develop him as an outfielder. Would it make sense for an Angels organization, who have at least tried to develop a two-way player in Otani to get in on the bidding? Perhaps. But perhaps the lack of reported interest indicates how teams aren't sure how to harness such a talent. But if $3 million gets you a chance to unlock this lottery ticket, isn't it worth it? Or is it better not to tinker with a young kid who at least projects as an above-average power outfield bat? Where do you think Colas will sign, and will he be a two-way player? Have your say in the comments.